together uh, whether it's fine art visual art or performing art and even some things that we are going to discover of what art is uh, I'm your host Elijah Pistana a content creator aspiring performer and future talk show host hopefully um, and I have some cool co-hosts with me if you guys want to introduce yourselves I'm Alejandro Monti uh, just here to start off with the podcast with my good friend Elijah mm-hmm. hello everyone <laughs> My name is Jonathan Garcia. I'm helping out my really good friend of mine, Elijah. I like to call myself, you know, just an overall entertainer. Like, you know, I like to act, sing, play saxophone. I'm also an instrumentalist. I like to write songs and all that. I like to write, like, short poems, short stories. Just anything that has to do with art in general, mm-hmm. I like. And I love to do it. I'm, like, what I like to call myself, like, the... Puerto Rican Jamie Foxx. Like, you know, like, <laughs> I like doing everything. I can't say what I'm a, I like doing one specific thing. I like doing everything. Everybody give a clap for Dominicano. Oh, that too. I'm also Dominican. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we got a mud over here. Uh, <laughs> uh, and actually, give us your introduction to, to art in general, whether it's fine or performing, Alejandro. What, what have you done, actually? So it's been really, really early. I started playing music since elementary school. Really? The, okay. the recorder in about fourth grade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was. <laughs> so from the very beginning, it's always been something in the back of my head. Mm-hmm. It really kicked off in middle school because okay. I started following my brother's footstep, and mm-hmm. we had an amazing music teacher, Mr. Normandon. Okay. That guy was awesome. Uh, he introduced my brother into music. He, my brother ended up going into jazz band, and from there I followed my brother's footsteps. In high school, I kept playing the alto sax. Eventually, I joined marching band, and from there we did. Uh, I did some a little bit of jazz band, and that's about it. Okay, so music has uh, evolved your life because of family, and you also use music as a form of some type of expression, right? Yeah. And that's pretty cool, especially leading in with our actual guest. We have an opportunity of interviewing someone pretty amazing in our part he is he does voices we're not gonna talk about that today but uh he is super funny uh he is a self-taught dj you don't really find that a self-taught dj um and he is a cool person to be able to mix and sample music all together our fellow guest uh jonathan castillo welcome to the podcast hey everybody my name is jonathan castillo um i'm still working on my dj name so mm-hmm. blank <laughs> John Lincoln Steel Black <laughs> DJ Cast DJ <laughs> Anyways <laughs> Lord. Um, yeah. um, We would actually like to thank Florida International University for giving an opportunity to host this podcast and to give a majority of the equipment here Go Panthers uh, Go Panthers Yep yeah. And uh, oh, this oh, the team? Yeah yeah that, 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 That's the A team uh, Actually show it to the people Yeah, here. This is a cool number R- Right there Right there so let me show you. So what's cool about this is that um, this was given to you by my uh, stepmom, Gianna. Obrigado, Gianna. O meu brasileiro querida. Um, sim. Yeah, sim. You see, What'd Portuguese. You <laughs> What'd you call you? Uh, <laughs> so this was actually given to me in Hawaii. Um, and this was a pretty cool thing, too, where I could write my thoughts and uh, organize my creative outlooks, which is really cool. And um, that's the whole point of the inspiration of this podcast in general. Um, me personally, I always loved creating. I always loved expressing myself through through music and content creation. And this was a great outlook for me. I want to thank Professor Brooks, who was our uh, uh, person who was teaching us how to market ourselves and using podcasts to be able to make this a cool marketable form. And um, I really think this is going to be a great podcast and what could be for the future. So thank you guys who are first looking at this, and then we'll continue on with that. Um, Well, here's going to be the format of usually these episodes. We're going to bring a cool, talented, amazing person such as uh, Castillo here. We're going to ask him some questions that we thought uh, that you guys of the audience would pick up for us. 
And in the end, he's going to give us something special. Like, for example, if you see the equipment here, he gave us the legit setup. I, I, I no, can't believe real. that. Yeah, I'm like, so, <laughs> so, 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 so let's give a clap for him. <laughs> and, 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 and within that, um, let's actually uh, get this show on the road. I have a couple of questions here, but let's just start with a basic one. Uh, where did you grow up? And what was your earliest memory of art of any discipline? It doesn't have to be teaching. Any art discipline. Hmm. Well, uh, I was born in Miami, so like Miami-Dade resident. But I, between third and fifth grade, my parents and I moved to Connecticut. And I feel like that's where my true love for music started really evolving. I wasn't around family since it was just my parents and I and a family, uh, one of my dad's childhood friends. And uh, I recall going through my dad's, like, CDs. And since he was, like, he grew, like, he was born, like, in the 70s, so he grew up in the 80s. So, like, he has, like, that funky, you know, like, those Bee Gees sounds and stuff. And Great time for music. Right, right. Amazing time right. for music. <laughs> so, obviously, um, I got really hooked into that. I didn't think about anything. Like, I didn't think about that being, like, something that I want to do. I just really loved music when I was growing up at that age. What was the first, like, CD or the first song that made you think, like, bro, I love this? Dude, uh, Staying Alive by the Bee Gees, man. (laughs) 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 Staying Alive, ha, 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 Staying Alive, copyright, copyright, copyright. But, but yeah, you know, the Bee Gees for sure really, like, wowed me when I was a really young kid. And growing up around that era, uh, a lot of reggaeton and rap was kind of booming up, like, with 50 Cent, Daddy Yankee, Evie Queen, um, who else? I forget. But, <laughs> yeah, Evie Queen, Evie Queen was great. I, had, dude, I saw her live, like, for real? The, like, the randomest times. Like, I was at Winwood for, like, a block party. Yeah. And there's, like, a whole bunch of performances and stuff. And all of a sudden, I just, I hear her voice. I'm like, yo, there is no way that Evie Queen's at Winwood right now. <laughs> Bro, she has a unique voice, but it's like, it, it works out. And um, so the combination of, like, funk and reggaeton and rap kind of, like, started to mold when I was a young age. Intermingle. Yeah. And blend. So, um, we came back to Miami, uh, around when I was in the sixth grade, uh, I was in a completely new school, new middle school, and didn't know nobody, but I wasn't really a shy kid. And I guess that, uh, that sense of personality kind of molded me into who I am right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I still loved music like crazy. And around middle school, that's when... You know, we're back in Miami. All our families are excited and this and that. Uh, I remember one trip. I don't remember what age I was in, but I remember we just recently came back. Mm -hmm. Uh, We were going to Fort Myers. That's where I had some of my family members visiting there. It's a two-hour drive from Miami to Fort Myers, and I was riding along with my older cousin. And um, he put his, like, humongous brick of a freaking ipod on, oh my <laughs> onto God. the auxiliary cord how many people had ipods yeah, yeah. <laughs> i didn't i actually didn't have an ipod yeah i i had a what's it called i had like one of those old little like sidekicks right and Ooh, i and i had so music lucky. Playing. I've, I've always wanted, wanted a i've always wanted a sidekick Bro, you know how much they sell that for now what it's like 60 dollars now Bro. i would still buy one I was, I'm gonna buy one. I'll just buy one just for the aesthetic. Just, just for the aesthetic. Dude, because like, yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, my mom has the razor, the Motorola razor, like the flip oh, yeah. phone. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the the flip phone, and she's like, "Oh, I love my razor." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think. Do you, do you guys have any questions? I was gonna say because like about the recording stuff. Mm-hmm. So back then, I didn't have an iPod. Mm-hmm. I had like literally like. Almost half this size of a Kyocera. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember. And that. whatever, there's a song on the radio that I really, really liked. I will tell everybody in the car, yo, shh, shh, shh. Yo, yeah. I'll tell everybody in the car, yeah. be quiet. <laughs> I just record the song. <laughs> when everybody had Shazam, shh. Okay, got it. Shazam. Dude, Shazam is the best. Shazam yeah. is the best. Shazam, dude, you, do not, okay, this is kind of off topic. 
when you go to Target or in, like Walmart or anything, dude, those songs that they play in the background are bumping. Yeah, I low found key though. So many <laughs> songs. I found so many bangers in Target key, though. in the changing room. Yeah. In the changing room, really? Yeah, yeah. Changing room. No, I bet. Yeah, dude, I, dude, I was trying on this jacket one time, and I, and I just stopped and I just, just sat down. I was just like vibing to it, and I was like, I don't even know why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying on the jacket. I don't even know why I'm here now. Like, <laughs> I know, no, it's crazy. Um, I think um, you had a question, right? Yes, I did. Did you ever think that you would want to go into this profession? How exactly did that? really kick in for you no i well um going back to so what i was saying i i think that car ride really solidified my love for electronic dance music because mm -hmm. um uh, my cousin was playing tiesto and it was like old tiesto was like trans tiesto Dang. and imagine oh. like, do you remember the song yes it was just be uh, by Tiesto. Okay. So you can imagine like 12, 11 year old boy just like witnessing trance music for the first time. Like, <laughs> the euphoric just like all over my body. And at that moment, I always wanted to find that feeling, that sound, that, that, that reason. And then fast forward, you know, throughout middle school, high school, I'm just building music, finding different genres and this and that. I... Uh, graduated high school and I'm working in one of those part time retail jobs. And everybody got, hates those. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, it got to a point where I loved music so much that like I would I would have like remixes in my head and I would like move heaven and earth to find one at least remotely close to what I had in my head. Right. And then it got to a point where I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna freaking do it myself bro. And I at that moment, I never thought about doing it as, like, a profession. More of a, like, I want to do this for me because I want to bring out what I have inside to the real world. You know what I mean? So, I still feel like that, actually. I don't, I don't, I really don't see myself, um, like, doing anything else. Yeah, like, and like, that sounds... That sounds bad, but I'm just, I'm literally trying to figure this out as I go on. Even right. though, like, I've been doing this for, like, what, like, it's been, like, five years or so now? Yeah. Um, and I've been building up some equipment, knowledge, and skills. That, that'll probably go within, I think Jonathan had a question about, oh, you know, okay. starting up with that, so. Yeah, yeah. before no. anything, I, honestly, a lot of people always say that you should have, like, a plan B or C. Mm hmm I don't really like that mentality too much. I like to think that oh, yeah, sure. your know. plan A I to don't. Z has to be what your dream is. Right. Mm -hmm. Because if you always have some form of self doubt, I feel like you could just, you'll just be too unorganized. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, absolutely. Yeah. And, and it's, you're trying to do too many things at the same time. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Too many plans and self doubt. Yeah. Very often our parents tell us that it's like always have a plan B. Right. Always have a plan B. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. like, and you, know, you and have to focus on one thing, get all the certification, all the experience. Mm -hmm. All the connections because nowadays it's very hard to get into the, to yeah. whatever you want to yeah. do, and especially musicians. And that's good that you brought that up because I actually experienced that with music. Mm -hmm. I was so obsessed with trying to make this into uh, a, a, like a professional like career. I like this is it. This is my ticket out. This is what I need to do. That if, and inevitably, like I lost that love for it. Mm -hmm. Um. And that's that's good that you brought that up because like I feel like a lot of people who are aspiring to do anything, music, dance, acting, whatever it is, always go back to why you love doing it. Yeah. Don't focus too much on like I need to get this done because X Y Z. Yes, you need to get it done, but why did you start in the first place? Mm -hmm. And I lost that. I lost that why, and you know, amazingly I got it back. Right. So, yeah. That's Dude, a, I'll be real, honestly, like going back to that because there was this one time where I felt like I lost my touch, and there was just one day like I got really, really stressed out, and like I was feeling like I was about to have a panic attack because there's so much stress on me, and something in the back of my head was just like, "Go get your sex." I even I stopped, I went, I started playing, and I just calmed down right after that. So after that happened, I was like, I need to get back. Mm -hmm. Were you playing Carrie's Whisper? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm so stressed out. 
to say for me. <laughs> but, 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 but it's true. People use art as not only as a form of expression, but a form of it's a ther- release. like a therapy. It, it is. Yeah, like, it, it helps really so much. Too. And, and there's music therapy. Like those it people really are actually is. using connection psychology and therapy, put it together and help people. Like there's this article that I read about people using it to help those uh, who are in the sped community for those who are having um the different forms of autism music is able to connect there's a story in brazil where there is this person um who was in the spectrum he loved coldplay right he loved coldplay who doesn't yeah he wasn't able to speak until the age of five or seven but he was able to first learn the words of the song um to uh, clocks or something Viva like that. La Vida. Uh, Viva La Vida. Um, and from there, he was able to express himself with the music of Coldplay to Amazing. the point where they were having this live show in Brazil and a reporter was saying, hey, they have this person who loves Coldplay and all that. Oh, bring him over. And then he got special treatment and he got to see the show live and you should have seen him. No way. He spoke more English than Coldplay himself. <laughs> it, 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 it's crazy. Yeah, at it, least it. It, it, it's crazy how like people can express themselves through music, you know? You know, but, speaking of the music therapy stuff, yeah. I'm, I'm currently taking a class in music business mm-hmm. where they're trying what, what they're trying to do with music therapy, they're trying to put that mix into the medical field. Really? Because I don't know if you guys know that, but music therapy is not in any sort of insurance, really at all. Wow. Like, that has to be out of your pocket because they don't consider that as a like, like as a, a legit thing, like you yeah. know, for medical. But well, currently now, yeah. but maybe with right now. But studies. well, right now, what they're doing, they're trying to do a petition in all states. Mm-hmm. I think only in Utah, like one of those small states that like that is now passed into mm-hmm. the. Um, the insurance policy, but it's on certain uh, insurances. Yeah, mm. because in the United States, everything when it comes to insurance is, is by boards and state level. Thing, exactly. Which is true. Yep. Uh, let's get back on track here in regards of questions. I think you had a question for him, Garcia, in regards of you know his process and also like um, how did he become pop, right? Yeah, yeah, because you said he used to work a part time job and stuff. Yeah. I'm looking at your set, man. Like, <laughs> how many hours did you put in? To like doing all that, like, did you learn before getting this? After getting this, like, how did you like physically learn how to DJ? That's what's up. Wow. So no one has ever really asked me this, and I never asked myself this. It just <laughs> sort of kind of happened in your room. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you just like woke up. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, no. Um, I I was really I first got the laptop. And my parents helped me out with getting the laptop. This one. This one. Shout out to his parents. Shout out to mom and dad. Te quiero mommy. Te quiero papi. Te quiero familia. Ya tu sabes. I'm not even Hispanic. I'm not even Hispanic. I'm not even Hispanic. He's got the shirt for it. He's got the shirt. No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not Cuban, so I, I don't want to no, say no, anything. No, I used to call it the guava shirt. Guava shirt. <laughs> the guava <laughs> shirt. <laughs> guava shirt. <laughs> but, but yeah, no, my parents helped me out getting this laptop first because I was actually thinking about going back to school. I just graduated high school and then I just began working because I couldn't really figure out what I wanted to do. And I really wanted to go back to school. And I told my parents, like, hey, like, you know, um, I want to go back to school. I don't know if I'm going to do online classes or this and that. And I told them straight up, like, I also want to try to make music. Mm-hmm. So they're like, all right, cool. And then one day we all found a day that we all could go to Best Buy. And we went to Best Buy and we talked to, like, one of the associates there. Uh, I explained to them what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And... <laughs> yeah, and, and by the way, uh, for those who don't see on camera, he has like an MSI gaming laptop. Yeah, it's a it's a, oh, it's a gaming laptop. Yeah, it's a gaming yeah. laptop. Yeah. Reason why you want a gaming laptop, especially if you're gonna do music production, is that it has a lot of things going on. Yeah, you have a lot of audio input and a lot of manipulation, and you need a high graphics card to able to run that. Because if Absolutely. you just get like an old rinky dink laptop that costs like hundred bucks. Not to discredit you, but you're going to have a really tough time trying to make a really solid track yeah. with that laptop. And for you to know, um, uh, near talk, um, you need a 
having a higher processor makes everything fast and relatively be able to deal with all that stuff as your RAM. Right. Because it's not only the system that you have. You need to have software, if I'm not mistaken, yes, related to you, this. Right? right. So the software I use is in, uh, it's called Fruity Loops. Mm -hmm. It's uh, FL Studio 21 right now. Mm -hmm. I think it's 21. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's what I've always watched YouTubers do. Because to go back to your question, I first started watching YouTube videos. Because I, I was curious, I'm like, you know, like, I, I want to do this, I want to know what it's like. And I found, I told myself, like, I can do that. I can sit down and do this. This looks bet, fun. Bet, bet. Yeah, yeah, like, bet, all right? Bet. Sure. <laughs> so, um, I got the laptop, uh, we took it out on a credit card. Uh, my parents told me, you pay for it, we're going to use our credit to take out the credit card. Mm -hmm. So, that worked, out, that worked out great. Paid off the laptop within, like, a year or so and just try to grind it out you know um i did go overboard i did burn myself out a couple times because mm -hmm. i'm just a very intense person like once yeah. i start something i'm just you know um but how'd you find this this DJ so setup? this is my second setup okay second this is my second one wow. so the first i first started with the laptop and then i inevitably got into the djing scene which i originally wanted to do because since i was like freaking 12 i've always wanted a dj first yeah right and i did virtual dj hated it because <laughs> virtual like what do you mean like yeah, virtual yeah. dj like it's like, like the laptop like in the laptop like oh this God. in the laptop like trying to imagine like you utilizing all these little knobs with a mouse like a dj version of garage band or something like that basically where you have put all the stuff you, together dj hero you yeah, could yeah, say <laughs> that yeah so think of like you this, but inside the computer. Yeah, because I'm thinking about for people who don't yeah. know this, have to understand the system. Uh, right. So yeah, so it's not a traditional um, mixer. It's just straight onto the computer. And it's very hard for me, at least, because I had to use each and every little knob with a little mouse trackpad. And I hated it. And I stopped doing it. That sounds no. so annoying. It is. So... Um, Fast forward, I got the laptop, I started messing all the music stuff, and then I'm like, okay, I have a good job, I think I'm, I think I should get a DJ equipment, I think I, think I should get a, mi a mixer. Mm -hmm. So, I saved up around like 500 bucks, Okay. and I got one, it's a two channel, smaller than this one, like it's probably like, so like half the, of this. Yeah, I would say like, like a little less than half. Like this. No, I'm sorry. A little more than half. I'm sorry. Yeah, relatively. Like, it's just small. It's like, you know, just for me to get it up. And, bro, let me tell you, I worked that thing to, like, like, <laughs> like, I I mixed every chance I could every single day I was off. You could see, like, my streaks, like, just the wear around, like, the rings. Just, like, how much I just, like, went in on it. But, um... Is that the one that had like actual like record player mixing, or it's like it's within the system? Yeah, no, it's like this, but it's just shrunk it down. Literally, it looks like this, but it has less. It doesn't have this section. It doesn't have these two channels. Yeah, yeah. Because um, people think these, you think, oh, they're gonna put the record, they're gonna mix it. Chica, yeah, chica, yeah, chica, no, chica, no. Chica, chica, chica. Yeah. So, so yeah, no, I, I, um, I was going crazy. I was so ecstatic because I, that was like my dream. Yeah. My dream was to DJ, mm -hmm. and um. I quickly learned that DJing, actually DJing, is only half the battle. Really? Yes. So what's the big part of it? The big part of it is music selection, mm -hmm. where you get your music, um, and how you play your music. What do you mean where you get your music? So everybody knows YouTube, mm -hmm. and everybody is like, oh, I like that song. Download, mix it. No, you do not want to do that nope. because it is a compressed song of a compressed song once you're download when like when you download that mp3 file from youtube to mp3 to your mixer think of it like you're trying to download an hd picture mm -hmm. and then you 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 kind of compress it and it gets all foggy mm -hmm. like the quality goes away it's like an android user sending a video to an right. iphone yeah. user. It's just the minecraft <laughs> yeah. you, get, you get like super hd and then when you look at it it looks like something straight out of like a nintendo 64 you know what yeah, i mean yeah. so <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, so how do you get that crisp sound Where, how do you get that original audio of a song so you look for things called record uh, I think it's called record rip record if I'm not mistaken 
record pools. Oh, is it like a file type or is it an actual like you, specific? Okay, so thing? it's like a specific website. I use a website called Bport, and I buy all my songs for like a dollar twenty five a pop. Okay. Um, not but bad. A- and you That's and you bad. legally own these songs to mix these songs. Yes. Okay. So yeah, these yeah. these these websites are meant for DJs, created by DJs, mm-hmm. and these are high quality songs. Meaning that I could take this with the songs that I have to a super like super stage talking about like 5,000 group crowd right. 10,000 group crowd right. all that and it would sound money like no type of clips nothing like it would it would sound crisp whereas if I would take my YouTube clips because we all have done that yeah <laughs> you know you have to start out somewhere yeah you have to start out somewhere so like I didn't know that mm-hmm. and I was like okay how am I going to get these songs uh, if, if, um, if I were to play those YouTube rips on those big stages it would be disastrous even in a club or a bar with a decent sound system super bad you do not want that so um it's music selection where you get your music and how you play your music because like yes there is beat matching and you have to um understand where one song ends and the other one will begin and stuff like that you also have to take into account the notes or the key that each song is because you can't just put you know an a key uh, an a dominant key song with a b dominant key song because they're gonna sound weird mm-hmm. um at least that's how i learned it very intro. yeah very, very intro. and also the timing like you know you can't just bring in a new track at a, like any random area so it's just it's it's a lot of science behind it and even i still mess up like i've i've been djing for little over four years and there's moments where i'm just like oh <laughs> i'm like that um but yeah no it's 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 a piece in its own no i've tried doing that like through garage band yeah <laughs> <laughs> my god <laughs> yeah um a question that i would like to ask is um besides your youth what other influences things of your music that you sample right is it the like the process of saying, "Oh, I want to sample," like I like I want to put that in my sample, or I have an idea of that? Is it just like you just watch a show or you listen to a track, you heard a person talk about a song, about the idea of like getting into your head from not like from the paper to to mixing, but it's like from your brain is like, "Oh, I want to put that and and make that into something." Oh, well, I would say it's like all of the above. Um, you get inspiration from anything. You know, you get inspiration from someone just simply saying a simple word to you and you're just like, you know what, that sounds good. Literally the other day, uh, since I work with um, my current job, I work at customer service mm-hmm. in an office. Uh, there was this little boy who came in with his toy and I was help- and my colleague was helping out his mom. Mm-hmm. And his toy was making this sound that I really wanted to sample. <laughs> <laughs> it was like somewhere like that. And I was like, I was like, hey kid, sorry, come over here, kid. Yeah, dude, you don't understand. Right here, right here, right here. You don't understand, I don't understand how many times me and Jonathan have hung out together, yeah. and we heard a literal sound, and we're just like, yo, sample that, sample that, yeah. 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 for real. No, dude, straight up, like, there's dead silence in the room. Get that sound right sample. now. So no, for real, for real. It'll, it'll be like that. Like, you'll be surprised. Speaking of which, Dead Mouse. We all know who Dead Mouse is. Um, for, for those who don't know, who is Dead Mouse? Because remember, right. there are people who don't even know. Show your shirt. Show your shirt. So <laughs> Dead Mouse is a huge inspiration of mine. Uh, oh, oh, oh. So you see all these mouses? That that's Dead Mouse. He's that's famous Mouse, for yeah. having a giant like like yeah. a, a mouse head, head yeah. a mouse head, and a famous uh, performer genre. Yeah. So yeah, like Dead Mouse, uh, his style of mixing inspired me mm-hmm. um, to mix like um, just. I don't know how to explain it, but like the way he brings in songs and chops them up while he's mixing is some something that I like to do, and I just made it my own. But Dead Mouse, when he's making songs, like he uses some like simple things. He'll get a microphone and he will cup his hand, and he will literally smack like his butt, and that's how he make like I I, I kid you not like eighty percent of his songs, and he he literally confirmed this on video <laughs> that he cupped his hand. And he went on his bunnies, went, and like he recorded that. So you could literally, guys, if you're an inspiring music like music producer, you could literally make sound out of anything. Just your imagination is what limits you. 
Yeah, we literally have a class in FIU uh, about uh, capturing sounds and right. uh, and putting it into musical suite. Really yeah. Cool. Well, Charlie yeah. Puth did a whole video about it on, um, <laughs> on Jimmy Fallon. Really? He uh, made a whole song on Jimmy oh, Fallon. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. yeah. it's it's It looks easy because sometimes it is. Uh, I really. think the song Light Switch, right? It's like, oh, Light Switch, oh. Yeah. And then the, the click is an actual Light Switch. Which is really cool. What I say is if it sounds good, put it in. Exactly. Yeah. Doesn't matter if it's it was like oh. And it's the craziest sounds. Yeah. It's the craziest sounds. Yeah. Like, if, I don't know if you guys you guys know Billie Eilish is right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So her bro- international star, American pop idol, music, Billie Eilish. So right. Her brother is her producer, like her personal producer, mm-hmm. and he has done videos explaining like what sounds go um, go on the songs, and it's something it sounds super simple, but dude, like ninety eight percent of the sounds is in their house. Like for I think it was Bad Guy or one of her slow songs, he used, he literally got a match, yep. set it on fire, <laughs> I, snapped at the same time, and just did the whole song. That was the percussion beat. I bet. Wow. And just the fire, pl- just mm-hmm. fire like lit in the background. Something like so crispy. like like that. Um, let's go over. I think. Um, what other questions do we have? Do you have something else? I was gonna I was gonna mention something because um. Me and Jonathan have actually done some music together. Yeah, we have. And I don't know, but like, how about you, you know, as a producer and all that. But like me as a, as a perform, me playing is I play with a lot of emotion. Like, right. I'm in this whole zone that like I'm in my own world that like no one else can see but me. So I wanted to know like whenever like you're DJing or like you have an idea, you know, what do you see like in like your in your imagine like in like in your head, like you know, with your imaginary thoughts and all that stuff. Like, yeah. what what exactly like do you see? Like, what do you feel? Like, like every time when you say guitar play, like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, like the stage yeah. bass, like when people, no. yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. no, or, definitely, definitely. It's a whole world that, like, you know, we've all done it, we've all performed before. Like, yeah. you know, we there's a world and there's a there's a part We're just in you. ourselves that we only see and yes. only we can describe it. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, but I want to know what is it that like you see and how you feel. Well, um, what I see, I I don't really see anything. It's more of like a feeling. It really feels like a flower is blossoming in my chest when I'm like hitting the right songs and right. I'm mixing in the right way. Because like, I'm very picky on what songs I look for when I'm putting in my playlist. Mm-hmm. Like I, what type of kicks I want to hear, what type of uh, sound, uh, cymbals or claps, even down to the bass lines. Like... Mm-hmm. Like things that make, cause this is my philosophy. Yes, we are perform, we are we are performers. We are we people who like to entertain, but the first person who listens is you. Is you exactly? So I'm 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 the first person I'm playing is to me. Okay. And not a, not in a, in a I mean that in a humble way because like if I'm not feeling it, then I'm gonna be producing just blank. Yeah. And. Man, like when I really get into it, like, like it's just like something that I don't want to stop. Chair face. Well, yeah, what do you yeah it's just like it's just like, ugh, like I, like I feel it. Like there's moments where like I'm like, uh, like I'm jealous. Like I wish I was playing. Like you know, like I wish like I could like get out of my body and just like continue mixing. <laughs> yeah. while I'm just like, Extra dance. Field, zoom out. Yeah. Whoa! Third person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, as far as like what I see, um, I don't know. I just. I I I would say shapes because like when I close my eyes and I feel like the song flowing within like you know I'm like grooving like I f- see hexagons and yeah, like, like the whole environment just changes. yeah like it like and that, that's that's a good point that you brought up I I try to build an environment I'm yeah, not exactly. I don't play just to play like I very picky with my songs because I believe that those songs will build an environment or create uh like some sort of like. In this, nah, in escapism, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that's what I like. That's what I want to see. When I go to a rave, when I go to a club, when I go X Y Z, like you know, I want to let loose, and that's exactly. what I try to re- recreate. Uh, uh, actually, I have a question about that. Yeah. Uh, how do you how do you react towards criticism when you feel one of your you know beats it's on point, but somebody tells you otherwise? How do you react to that? And how do you recommend people to react to that? Oh uh, well, for me, um, I I just really open ears, you know. Obviously, if you're being rude, you know, I won't, <laughs> I won't. It's not gonna, it's not gonna go well. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna really take in that criticism. But uh, 
always always be open to criticism because you don't know what the other person hears like every ear is different yeah especially like a musical ear like every musical ear has a different tone a different sound a different like uh taste and it's a it could be a blessing or a curse like there's and and be aware of of how they're critiquing you like because they could be critiquing you out of spite or yeah from from a bad place right right or yeah. they're just like straight up like hey man like you know like that 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 drop was sick but you could have hold off this bar a little bit longer or you know like you like i heard that you had this baseline going maybe you should have kept a little bit longer for the transition you know things like that like pointers yeah and also that there are people who are like who don't know nothing about your craft right like, oh yeah Oh, uh, I could have done it better. Oh, okay. uh, uh, you <laughs> should have made buttons. the sound lower. Yeah, lower. But but they're not professionals in your craft. You're just pushing yeah. buttons, and I just I could do that. So what do you do? So so you really have to like pick and choose, or you just take like a general? Yeah, I, I would say like take it more like in a general sense. Mm-hmm. Like don't pick and choose. Don't be don't be cherry picking because then you're gonna be closing yourself off to good critique criticism. Like. And it doesn't and 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 be humble always mm-hmm. always be humble, because you don't like even though you know, uh, Fulano who never touched a set is giving you actually good advice. Don't be like oh bro you know we're just talking about you know he's a listener he knows like like everybody knows to a certain degree what sounds good yeah, exactly mm-hmm. right you know like you go to a club you've never I'm I'm pretty sure you never DJ no and you go to a club and you're like damn that was that was fire you know like wow this is really good. Yeah. Obviously, you, you know like that because we hear music all the time right. wherever we go. It's a part of our lifestyle. Right. 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 So, yeah. so even if that person knows or doesn't know, be open to that cr- criticism mm-hmm. and be humble. Um, the final question that I have is just one of those basic questions: is uh, what are your current goals with your art form? Like, what are you trying to to, to get it around with it? You know, like my, what are your current goals with the art form? My current goal is to be as good as i physically emotionally spiritually anything could be Mm -hmm. because i'm i have i'm still not i'm still learning Mm -hmm. and i'm probably still gonna learn till the day i die but i want to be the best me i could be you know i could be inspired by whoever i encounter i could be inspired by big names and stuff like that but i want to be the best me because i know what i like i know what i want to make and I want to reach to a point where, like, I, I'll be like, like, oh, I, I have this song in my head, and I'll just sit down and, just, you know, just create yeah. that. Because I'm still learning how to make music. You know, it's still it's still a learning process. It takes a long time. Some people get it in a few months. It takes it, you know, with my how my life is going, and like, you know, as I get older, more responsibilities. It's a little harder to stay consistent, but I'm still learning. Was there ever my bad? Was there ever a point in time, you know, in your in your pathway of music? where you just thought to yourself maybe this isn't for me oh 100 percent, a thousand percent and uh, if so moment, yeah. what made you pick yourself back up and keep going yeah share that moment a hundred percent no dude um there was a point where i was i was tied on money and then that was like my main priority and um i actually quit my job to pursue music uh, because I'm like, I don't want to do this. Like I'm going to, I'm going to mix full time every day. I wake up, mix, that's it. But I found myself in a hole mm-hmm. and I got really depressed because I'm like, I just quit my job and I'm not feeling this music anymore. Wow. But it's because I was approaching it in a different way. Mm-hmm. Like you have to do it. I was approaching it like I had to do it, mm-hmm. which is not bad, but if you're steering it in a negative way, then you're obviously going to get negative results. And that's what happened with me. And that's what led me to stop doing it completely. Like I went on, a, I probably went on a good like year, year and a half hiatus mm-hmm. of music. And um, I I thought that that was done. And I was content with it. You know, I was like, you know what? That was a phase. I, I'm glad that I did it. But something just brought me back up. Like you just can't escape that that love that you have of that passion that you have like literally like i took one glance at my system because i had it stored up and i was like (sighs) and i plugged everything (laughs) back up and bro i'm telling you like i went crazy i didn't play for a whole year and i just i i threw down like one of like probably like the sickest mixes i ever had i wish i recorded it i forgot because 
you know, I didn't I didn't have that 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 uh that uh system. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um to go back to it, yeah, so to what got me back up, I to be honest, I'm not sure, man. Like it's just maybe it never left. Mm-hmm. You just come you probably convince yourself that it left, which I did. I totally one hundred percent convinced myself, like, you know what? It's not for me. I'm glad I did it. Whatever. But it just sprung back up. So when you're at that hole, recognize why you're at that hole. Mm-hmm. And be mm-hmm. be emotionally intelligent enough to and humble enough to 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 tell yourself like, okay, I put myself here because for my in my in my case, I took it way too far. Mm-hmm. You know, I probably didn't approach it how I should have. Know your limits. Know your limits, right? Okay. Know your limits. What you can do, what you cannot do. Right, mm-hmm. right. Uh, here is the final two questions, right? Uh, I think it'll be like an ongoing question throughout the entire podcast. But one is going to be, is DJing an art form? And if so, why? And then the final question is going to be, um, what are you going to tell uh, future people who want to say, I want to be a DJ? What are the tips you have for me? Just briefly. But first, the big question is, is DJing an art form? A hundred percent. It's a, it's a without question. It's an art form. Uh, like what I just previously explained to you, like it's not just pushing buttons. You have to music select. Be aware of your environment if you're playing with a crowd. Like you have to be, uh, inte- like, like, um, socially intelligent enough to understand the environment wow. that you're playing for. Mm-hmm. You also have to um, understand music theory to a certain degree. You also have to just be open to 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 constantly listen to music. Like I'm always listening to new music, and sometimes it wears me out. I'm mm-hmm. gonna be honest, like mm-hmm. for sure, but. With all that combined, it is truly an art form, and it's not. And there's some other DJs that are I consider disc jockeys instead of DJs because they can they literally manipulate like sound that has already been produced to make a new sound, bro. Like, yeah, you, you can't deny that. Mm-hmm. And there's I've seen a plethora of videos of just people going crazy with something exactly like this, and and. And it it's like they're drawing on a canvas, in, yeah. from my eyes. And for those people who want to become DJs, like what what's some advice you would probably give them in regards to the art form? First, the equipment doesn't make your skill. Mm-hmm. Um, if I start off with a two channel DJ uh, on a on a basic software, Serato Pro or Sor- Serato Beta, and I still threw down, man. Like I still I was still going crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, and if if you if you have the time and you have the resources and you're and you're able to 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 actually go out of your way and 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 buy the equipment do it do it because i feel like i took way too long to buy my equipment i probably could have been at a much better area right now but don't be afraid to try new things don't mm-hmm. be afraid to play that song don't be afraid to to mix these two uh these two genres don't be afraid to try something new and also don't be afraid to you know play what the crowd is playing don't be afraid to not be different also just be yourself be what you want to to be play what you want to play learn keep growing and the equipment doesn't make you yeah you make you Mm -hmm. right and just always have fun don't forget to have fun this is a fun hobby this is a fun career for some and once you lose that fun from what i've from what i've experienced it's 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 gonna it's gonna be hard to get it back you know so don't lose sight of why okay um and that were wise words of wisdom from a self-taught dj and a great performer jonathan castillo and we're actually going to... Amazing performer. The, amazing performer. <laughs> I love it. That, we're actually going to hear his performance now. That's one of the cool oh, things about this podcast is that we're able to let these people show off their talents within the show. And all you're going to do is just plug in all these different connections and we're actually going to see how this goes in. So tune in in a bit.
performing some music live as a DJ, making this stuff in this mixer. Here I have Jonathan Castillo. Take it away, bro. Stage Thank is you, yours. Man. Thank you, guys. All right, so um, I'm going to try to give you a quick tutorial how I do things, but uh, my method is not uh, like how I you should do it anyway, but um, I do hope that you do get some knowledge from what I have to do or what I'm doing right here, but most importantly, I hope you're having as much fun as I will when I do this mix, all right? Thank you. Uh, that's what love is that baby We're in it for love, love, uh, love, love, love I'm mixing two songs at the same time. So I'm taking the low end on this song and the high end on this song. Creating a whole new track at the same time. So, let's see what I do with this. What I just did was I started off with track number one. Track number two is now completely taking over the mix right now. Um, so a tasteful thing that I did was I utilized some elements from both tracks to create something new in the middle of the transition of the other one. So um, I really love the low end on this space. It's just like it's very punchy, very like, like just, you know, you just want to make it groove. So, and I like the first track, how it started. So just blending those two together, and that's just the job of a DJ. Just try to create something when you're, you know, in the moment. Not necessarily all the time, but it's encouraged. So I'm trying to find a second track here that will complement what I'm trying to build here. So that's why this scroll right here is four. So Usually on each side, you're gonna see these big knobs, and that's just to load the track. Always be careful which side you're trying to load the track on because there's been moments where I'm DJing and then I load track one to deck number two and it's not fun. So just uh, food for thought.
So, I actually didn't like that. And I did it on purpose so you guys could see like, even though sometimes you're not gonna wanna like a certain track coming in, you're not gonna want uh, that track coming in too early or you're too scared to bring it in at a certain time, just keep going. Cause it's worse when you stop as opposed to, you know, uh, keep going. You know, they might think like, oh, that was weird. But then like, they will forget about it within like five or six minutes. So let's see how I could recover from this kind of muddy transition. So you see that? That's indicating that the track is finishing, so I gotta work something up fast before an awkward cutoff is gonna happen. So let's see what happens here, alright? Luckily, I timed track number two in line with track number one, like how I mentioned earlier, with the drops. So the second drop it should be coming up now. And perfect timing for track number two. So let's kick it up a notch a little bit, right? Yeah. 
Okay to make mistakes because without mistakes, how are you gonna be better than who you were yesterday? So that being said, guys, don't stop. If you wanna, if you wanna do this, bro, this, in my opinion, is the best thing that I have ever done in my life. And yeah, so I'm Jonathan Castillo. Thank you, Elijah, for having me in this podcast, and I look forward to seeing more DJs out there. <laughs> And if you want to reach to me, uh, you can reach me to um, on Instagram at j underscore castro2 or uh, castomoto media. Castomoto underscore media. Peace.